As far as the setup goes, I'm gonna show you how I set up. This isn't the end all be all of benching, right? I'm not saying that I'm the best bencher in the world, that I, you know, you have to bench exactly like me, okay? This is just what I know works for me after 10 years of competing, right? Josh benches a different way than I do. He benches a lot. So by all means, I'm not gonna change the way he sets up because he's found something that works for him. You guys all need to try different things and figure out what works for you, okay? I'm gonna show you little things that can be applied to everybody, whether or not you set up like me, whether or not you set up like Joe Schmo over there, or whether you set up like Josh, right? None of that matters, but there is certain things that you need to do in order to be successful when you bench, okay? So the first thing I want everyone to do before I even show you anything is I want you to put your arms out in front of you. Strip as far out as they go, okay? That would be what you would be like if you let, if you lay down on the bench, grab the bar, and were completely arms extended, right? Everyone see how far that is, okay? Now what I want you to do is I want you to retract your shoulder blades back and down, right? Now look how far your hands are. It's a lot less of a distance, right? So, you're good for now, right? Your main goal in a bench, in any competition, is to lift the most amount of weight possible, right? We're not bodybuilders where we're trying to develop big pecs and trying to get the, you know, trying to look like the people in the magazines, right? Obviously, that may come with it, but our main goal is to lift the most amount of weight. So if we can, if the movement that it takes us is shorter, what's most likely going to happen? If you have to move the weight at least this time, what's probably gonna happen? You're gonna be able to lift more, okay? So back out here, arms out straight, okay? Get your, a little bit wider so your normal, whatever your normal grip is, okay? Now, pull your shoulder blades back and down. Right now, look how, look how least, less of a distance you have to go. Right, and some people, if they do it properly, can take off four to five inches of range of motion, okay? Roughly, it's about, roughly, 10 pounds an inch of range of motion that you can take off. So if you can take off five inches of your, of your bench stroke, you can roughly add 50 pounds of your bench, onto your bench, right? That's obviously not for everyone, but that's the you know, general rule, okay? So think about that every time you lay down on the bench, right? Some people, they'll just lay down on the bench, grab the bar, start warming up, all right? The things that I'm gonna show you as far as setup wise are things that need to be practiced. Right, you can't just say, all right, I'm gonna pull my shoulder blades back and down, and then I'm gonna add 50 pounds to my bench, okay? These things are gonna be, are gonna be, have to be worked on every time that you're performing the movement, right? I tell Josh and, and, all, and all my guys, right, every set from the bar to your top set should be done with the same technique. Obviously, to the best of your ability, but you shouldn't just try to you know, try hard when there's 315 on the bar, right? So, you, so your setup should look exactly the same whether or not it's the bar or whether it's, whether it's 405. Because you're practicing those good habits every set that you're taking. And the more practice you get, the more it becomes second nature, right? So I'm sure some of you guys, when, it's, when it comes time to, to hang clean, right, it's easy because you've been doing it for so long. And it just comes natural and you just hang clean, right? That same thought process and that, that same you know, train of thought needs to happen on all of your exercises, right? But especially a, a movement as technical as the bench is, it makes it even more important to practice those little things from your first set to your last. So my setup is I set up my upper body first. So I'll pull my shoulder blades together and down. I'll set my feet. Get the bar, take the bar out, and wrap. Oh, there goes my hat. All right, so that's my setup, right? Your setup may be completely different after we work on it a little bit, but there's certain things that, I, that I've that i done, that I do, that you should take and put into your own bench training. So the first thing was setting up 
my, my, my upper body, right? You always wanna set your upper body up first because that's what's actually contacting the bench, right? So if you look, Josh, right? So Josh is gonna show you his setup. Okay, we looked two complete, it was two completely different setups, right? But there was a couple things that whether or not Josh's back was flat, my back was arched, Josh's feet were flat, mine were tough, right? There was, a, there was certain things that were the same between the both of us, right? So the first thing was setting up the upper body, right? Upper body needs to be set up, you need to pull your shoulder blades back and down before you even touch the bar. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this, right? You can, you can kind of like wedge yourself in, right? I know some people do it like that. There's some people who will slide themselves under the bar like this, and their shoulder blades are back and down. However you feel comfortable is what's gonna work for you, okay? But the main thing that you need to do and the main thing that you need to feel is that. Right? So, and you can think about it in your head. Back, down, right? I've taken all of that distance off of my bench stroke. Right? That's the most important thing. We want to we wanna minimize the range of motion. By minimizing the range of motion, we should be able to add weight onto our bench. Okay? So first thing is gonna be that back and down thing. Second thing is setting up our feet, right? Our lower body, right? Just because you hear the word bench, doesn't mean that it's just an upper body movement. Just like your squat is a full body movement and your deadlift is a full body movement, your bench is a full body movement. So if you're benching correctly, by the time you're done, your legs and, and back should be sore. It shouldn't just be a chest dominant movement, right? Your, full, your whole body should be working properly, okay? So after we set up our upper body, it's time to set up our lower body. Now, there's a couple different things that you can do. Right? Once that upper body is set, the shoulder blades are pulled back, there's two different types or ways that you can bench. You can bench with your back flat on the bench, or you can bench with an arch. Okay? If you were to look from the side, you can if you want. There's space in between the bench and my lower back. Right, that's called an arch, right? The reason why people arch is to, again, decrease that range of motion. The higher, the higher your back is, the higher your chest is gonna be, so the, le the, lead, the less distance you, the bar has to travel, okay? It's all about minimizing the range of motion. I'm sorry, does, no, that, no, but, does that put any kind of a strain on the back? Because you're, you're kind of putting it all up on the top. So, you know? the internet, will say that if you're arching your back, you're gonna hurt your back and all these bad things are gonna happen. If it's done properly, no. The other thing you have to think of is you're not in that position for 10 minutes at a time, you're not in that position for five minutes at a time. You're in that position to, for your set and then your set only, okay? So I'm not telling you that every time you lay on a bench to arch your back, but I'm telling you when it's time to, to train your bench press, if that's, what feel, if that's what feels comfortable for you, then it is okay to arch your back if done properly, okay? So a proper arch, the only two points of contact on the bench should be your upper back, so your traps, your rear delts, your lats, and your butt, okay? So you, you almost think you're making a, like a U or a, an upside down, like, it should almost look like that, okay? Um, by doing that, obviously, like you said, we're decreasing the range of motion, okay? But we're also creating a base. So, yes, it may be uncomfortable at first to be in this position, but again, weightlifting in general isn't a typical, typically a comfortable fit. So, just like the bottom of a squat isn't the most comfortable thing or the bottom of a deadlift isn't the most comfortable position, your setup on your bench isn't gonna be somewhere that you wanna spend you know, a Saturday afternoon. 
But if your goal is to enter a competition and lift the most amount of weight possible, there are certain things that you need to do to get out of your comfort zone. Right? Let me answer your question a little bit. Okay. So your your setup, your lower body now, we're gonna put, we're gonna add your lower body in. So like you said, feet flat, feet tucked, feet out in front, feet wide, feet tucked wide, feet tucked close. Those are all gonna be based upon your level of flexibility. Right? The more flexible your hips and hip flexors are, the more you should be able to tuck and get your feet underneath you. Okay? If you're someone who's very stiff, then I would suggest stretching a little bit more in the morning, stretch out your hip flexors a little bit, and that'll loosen up those hip flexors, which should allow you to arch a little bit better. Just be in a more comfortable position. Right? Um, it may not be the most comfortable, but if you're a little bit more flexible, it should allow you to not get off the bench and be like, oh wow, that really sucks, kind of thing. So lower body is gonna be dependent on the individual's flexibility and comfort level. Obviously, that's something that you can train. Right? There's certain things that you can do to, to work on it, which can make it a little bit more comfortable for you. This is what I did when I, when I first started. Um, competing to really work on my arch is set up around a foam roller. So the only th the only two points of contact are my upper back and my and my butt, and it's the same movement every time, right? If you've never arched before, I would not suggest just picking up this foam roller and trying to arch around it. Um, but that is something that if you're working on your flexibility more and you want to kind of gauge how flexible your hips are, just kind of set up around it and see if your upper back and butt are touching. If they're not touching, that means that you don't have that flexibility yet to have that kind of arch, right? Your body almost molds around it. So if I were to do that again, like this, and I ask Josh to pull out the foam roller, he should be able to, and nothing changes. Right? My body position doesn't move. Right? So that's how you're, you kind of form that arch that you're, you're, you're kind of just making that range of motion that much smaller. Um, again, I wouldn't suggest the first time you practice that to bench with the foam roller underneath you, but that is something that you can do later on down the line to um, feel comfortable being in that position.